Breaking news on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Once again, on the recruiting front, as Noah Carter, a six foot four, 220 pound edge defender from Centennial High School in Peoria, Arizona, Carter, who was recently released from his NLI with Washington, has made it known, Tim Watts, that he will be joining the Alabama Crimson Tide. Yeah, you know, this is another guy coming from that Washington connection that we've seen pay off so well. They've got their center. Got a wide receiver. They had no on campus with those guys. Uh, you know, I was talking to Charles Power, one of the fast risers at that uh, former Army All American game, just known as the All American game now. But six foot four, two forty, looks like a jackrabbit linebacker. That guy coming off the edge will chase you down. He's got some speed. I believe he was an Arizona Player of the Year. Uh, we've seen people rank him in the top one hundred. He's probably going to get a, a good look in the rankings. Went on three, does their final rankings, but. Again, I don't think you can have enough guys that will chase the quarterback. And if you look at this guy, also I love the fact that he's got offensive clips at tight end. You know, this yeah, is a guy that's a player. Yeah. yeah, this is a guy that's legitimately a two-way player. But his violence on defense, you watch him chase the quarterback coming around the edge, very violent, very physical. And I'm sure that's a guy you want to get out there that 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 you can line up and do different things with. Also, he's shown a lot of versatility at wide receiver too tight end position that he probably is a guy that could drop back in coverage or latch on to a tight end coming off the line. Two-way player for Centennial High School in 2023, totaled 55 tackles, including 11 sacks on defense, had eight touchdown catches, also returned two punts for touchdowns, Tim. So we're in yeah. that sort of Dante Hightower territory <laughs> exactly. as a high school recruit. When we talk about everything this guy did, on the high school level, um, and we're seeing it right here in the clips as we watch him, as you said. Look at him go up and win a 50-50 ball on the outside as a wide receiver. Just uh, Charles Power talked about that, too, this the week that Noah Carter apparently had in San Antonio at those All-American Bowl practices made a real impression on Charles. I mean, the guy looks like a, an athlete. You saw him dressed up for his official visit with the other visitors, Certainly looked the part of a college football player. And again, I just think when you have a guy that's ran routes, you can do a lot with him on defense, including, you know, jam a tight end, run with the tight end. We've seen, you know, plenty of boxes like that. But obviously getting to the quarterback, there he is, you know, you know, the ball tends to find this guy. Getting to the quarterback, being physical and violent. You just can't have enough of those guys. Probably an early impact guy, possibly on special teams even. We've seen, you know, the college level use those guys to develop. And I mean, you just watch him. I mean, there, you know, there he is again. You just watch this guy making plays all over the field. It's not that Arizona has the toughest competition. It's not the South, but it's good football he's playing against. These aren't tiny little tots, you know, he's looking at where they had to pay to go to school. I mean, he's playing to get some, you know, solid guys. And uh, obviously, look how big he is returning the ball and just stuff you don't see. Dante's a great reference. You know, we remember we sent our old photographer, TG Pascal, on the way to shoot photos for us at the Tennessee game going to Knoxville. And he's like, Hey, this guy's pretty good. I got a clip of him returning a kickoff. And I first thought, shoot, he's out there filming the wrong guy. And he's like, no, there's the right guy. He's humongous. So yeah, you saw that. We saw what an athlete Dante was. So anytime you got that versatility, ball skills, and like I said, everything about him screens athlete. So a lot to like here. Yeah. This guy in the tape we're watching, he's running legit routes too, like the footwork yes. at the line of scrimmage to yeah. get separation. And then it uh, looks like Laquan Treadwell from the old yeah. Miss days with some of these back shoulder catches that he's making at the high school level. But by all accounts, another strong pickup, more momentum for Kalen DeBoer on the recruiting trail. We've talked about the Washington five uh, to this point. They have come through, uh, I would say, in, in spades. And oh, you think about the outside linebacker, the edge position under Kalen DeBoer and Kane Womack, the new defensive coordinator, going to be a 4-2-5. But again, I think when you look at a guy like this, uh, he's going to fit just fine no matter what system you play. Yeah, he's not far off from maybe a Quay Russo. When you look at his versatility, Quay didn't play offense, obviously. But you can see the different alignments that he could he would uh, be able to jump in there. Also, this is a guy very familiar. You know, the Washington staff's very familiar with him, having recruited, um, having watched him closely, having had him on campus. So 
it's not like these guys are flying blind with these Washington connected kids. You know, fair or not, Tim, going from Nick Saban to Kalen DeBoer, when we look at some of these guys, some of these prospects, there's always going to be that question in the back of your mind. Is this guy a take? Is he a Nick Saban take? And when I watch the tape here, what I see is a Nick Saban take, Tim. Oh, absolutely. I think he's a take for most teams. I mean, what you're seeing is, a you know, again, you have a guy that's playing two ways. I, I know Alabama recruit. We've confirmed he's going to be on defense, but I think he can play offense at, a, you know, <laughs> at several schools, uh, may, you know, including Alabama. But, again, the Washington staff, I've been told, likes him as defense only. But these offensive highlights, they aren't an edge rusher or a linebacker playing tight end. If like he had, a Maury you know, Nyblack kind it, of. Yeah, if he had no – Hey, if he had no defensive clips and all we saw was the tight end, we'd still like him, right? I mean, right. we've seen him toe tap in the back of the end zone. We've seen him, him go up in high point. We just saw him catch one, land on his back. You know, this guy's an athlete. You know, and I think there's just a, you know, a big upside. You know, when you when you look at these guys that can project anybody. Again, I can't say it enough. Anybody that can get to the quarterback is invaluable. Also, probably going to be a special teams guy if they need him there. So good instincts. You watch him here. Um, you know, jump fake comes right back in and, you know, gets in on the play. So very athletic. Wouldn't surprise me if he's got some basketball in his background. Um, you know, maybe as a youth, we haven't dug into him that deep, but it's not going to surprise me if he's a pretty good athlete at others in other sports. Yeah. This is a guy, again, when you watch the tape, uh, you see a, a multi-talented individual and understanding there's going to be an acclimation process simply because he's played multiple positions. And if it is defense where he is expected to settle in, there are some nuances to playing the edge position, probably as much in terms of defending the run and using your hands, leverage, technique in those ways as it is just getting after the quarterback, which he's showing you here. Yeah, he can do with great aplomb. Uh, yeah. But he does show just some natural instincts and some ability, even against the run, some power uh, that's going to work well for him. And I think you hit on it earlier. Not sure if he'll be a day one special teams guy, but I think he'll be in that conversation. Yeah. When you're looking, you know, what's, you know, what is uh, Kalen DeBoer's main objective right now is creating the best roster he can. I mean, he brought a, you know, a guy with honors, uh, center with honors from the Pac-12. Uh, you get him, you get Jeremy Bernard, who everybody, everything I read about Jeremy was he was going to be wide receiver one for Washington this year, again, behind some guys that were pretty talented. And you add this guys, I mean, these aren't the bottom three on your roster. You know what I mean? These are guys that you expect to come in and play and have a chance to play. Your roster is better when you add a Noah Carter. And again, you were right. I think that, you know, if Nick Saban took this guy, we'd be pretty excited about it. You lose Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell from those edge positions, but you know Carter definitely adds quality to a room that currently consists of veterans like uh, Q Robinson, Keanu Coote, promising 2023 signees, Keon Keeley. You mentioned Quay Roussel, Yon Pierre. Pierre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, uh, I think this is a, a quality addition, too, at a position where after last year's class, you didn't really think Alabama would make it a point of emphasis, but any time – uh, you can add a versatile defender like this, you're going to do it. Yeah, and, you know, Andrew said this earlier. We were talking about him, but he does have some JSON in him, you know, the, the 2024 signee. Alabama didn't go heavy on those edge guys, but here's another one. And, again, if you believe iron sharp, sharpens iron, this is what you want. You want this competition. You want everybody in that roster getting pushed uh, for playing time and everybody fighting for playing time. So, again, Probably, I think, you know, I don't know how all the rankings are going to shake out, but if, you know, if anybody had him in the top 100, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say mean things to him. I think he's earned that kind of respect. He's He's been on the ascent I, I've seen where the rankings are concerned and it wouldn't come as a surprise if ultimately he does land in that top 100. So there you go. Noah Carter, four-star edge from Arizona, previously a signee for the University of Washington, will instead play his college football at the University of Alabama. Tim, as always, thanks for taking the time. All right, you got it. See you guys on the roundtable. Hang out with us on the roundtable. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel here, we certainly hope you'll do that as well. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our video content as it drops. But absolutely, BOL, roundtable, everything we know as we know it, you're going to learn it first on the roundtable 
at BamaOnline.com. For Tim Watts, Travis Ryer, thank you again for joining us. Until next time, so long, everybody.